Having knocked out all the response videos regarding my stance on the LRO, this leaves me with various non-LRO arguments to focus on. One of them is the fact that the lunar module didn't leave a blast crater where its 3,000 pound thrust engine had fired. This was briefly mentioned in my video discussing the alleged Apollo 15 halo. After all, the two subjects are related. Scientists incorrectly attributed the sunlit portion of these natural impact craters to being discoloration by the engine plume, and we know that such an engine should have dug a hole in the ground. Once again, the lunar module didn't leave a disturbance visible from space, and it didn't leave a blast crater. In response to the former, Astro Brandt 2 initially denied that such an engine disturbance should be visible. Then he backpedaled and said there was a disturbance as evidenced by Chandrayaan 1's photos and two before and after photos from Apollo 15. We established that the Chandrayaan 1 photos merely show only the same brightly lit craters photographed by LRO and Cellini and the Apollo 15 shots were supposedly taken from different angles and subsequently wouldn't show the same degree of illumination from the crater. But Astro Brandt went on to dispute the claim that the LEM should have dug a crater in the lunar surface. As usual, Astro Brandt hasn't thoroughly researched the argument he is responding to. He probably only knows my blast crater research from the brief clip in the one video. Much of what he says has already been debunked in my more thorough video on this subject. But, well, here we go again. Long story short, private company Armadillo Aerospace built a LOX alcohol-powered rocket packing only 500 pounds of thrust to the lunar module's 3,000 pounds of thrust. This puny engine blasted a hole through concrete. This contradicted the claim that a 3,000 pound thrust engine is not enough to dig a crater in the lunar surface. This video clip has become a staple of Jarrah White's anti-NASA, anti-Apollo, anti-truth obsession on YouTube. He has included it in a couple of his videos and makes frequent reference to it as proof that we could not possibly have landed on the moon because the LEM's exhaust would have dug a crater underneath the LEM. This crater nonsense was originally pushed by Bill Casey, and of course Jarrah's attitude about that is, Bill said it, I believe it, and that's that. That is not my attitude at all. I have never claimed everything Bill Casey said was accurate. As wishful as it is, there will never be any material from either side of the fence that will be without error. My attitude is not simply because Casing said it, my stance is Bill said it and I have verified it. What amuses me most about this is that Jera says this rocket in this video clip blasted a hole in the concrete or through it. Well, let's see if there's any reason to believe that claim. If this was blasting a hole in the concrete, one would expect to see some sign of ejecta coming out of it. But there are only a couple of little sparks. Yes, it does appear to be scored and discolored in the area where the flame was, but that doesn't look like a crater to me. In his words, bullshit. Astro Brandt is showing his audiences a poor quality version of the clip. You are more than welcome to check the high resolution of it. I show it in my video and put it in the sidebar. A crater is indeed visible. Sorry Astro Brandt, but denying the existence of what anyone with a pair of eyes can see will not help your cause. Jarrah's conclusion is that with the lunar soil being softer than concrete, there should have been a huge crater underneath the lander. Let's do a little math and see if there's any basis for that claim. That nozzle appears to be maybe three inches in diameter, which would be an inch and a half in radius. Uh, square that, multiply times pi, and we get the area of the nozzle. 
and now we divide that into the pounds of thrust and we get the force per square inch. Now to get the unit area comparison with the uh, limb thruster we have to make that smaller on the screen and here's the size that the lem nozzle is which is going to be 54 inches in diameter or 27 inches radius. Square that and multiply by pi to get the area and then divide that into the total amount of thrust, 3,000 pounds. And you get 1.31 pounds per square inch. Hardly enough to dig a big crater in the moon, but it is 70 pounds per square inch for the Armadillo rocket and 1.3 pounds per square inch for the Apollo descent stage. So this little rocket here is delivering about 54 times the unit area of force that the LEM does. Astrobrand is speculating that the Armadillo rocket has a nozzle of only 3 inches. I have not been able to find the exact dimensions, but let's just assume he's right. A 3 inch diameter nozzle will certainly produce a pressure of 70 psi at the source. Now. What will that pressure become on the ground? If we measure the diameter of the flame at various heights, you can see halfway down the flame diameter has grown fivefold. This means the area is 25 times larger and since pressure is inversely proportional to area, the 70 psi is reduced by a factor of 25 to 2.8 psi. Our original 70 psi is no longer looking very impressive, and we are only at the halfway mark. Below the midpoint, the flame's exterior cools to infrared and can no longer be seen, so we'll need to estimate the rest. If the flame continues expanding at the same rate, it will be 10 times its original diameter when it reaches the ground. That makes it 100 times the area, resulting in a pressure of only 0.7 psi. So much for the Armadillo rocket producing 50 times more thrust than the lunar module. As usual, Astrobrand is clinging to claims that were already debunked. If you recall back to my video on blast craters, you'll remember that we learned a leaf blower produces only 0.5 psi at maximum, and it blows away any loose dust directly in its path. Obviously, if 0.5 psi can do that, 1.31 psi will do wonders to any loose dust directly under the engine bell. Yet we see loose pebbles and grains directly where the plumes would have struck. So the bottom line is you're wrong again. Your comparison is invalid. Bill Casing was an idiot. and you will not be able to find a single qualified aerodynamics or aerospace engineer, physicist, or any expert in this field anywhere in the world who will agree with you on this point. Gee, that's strange, because in my Blast Crater video we found one who does agree with me on that point. As we learned earlier, in 1953, Dr. Werner von Braun proposed a 50 crew expedition to the moon. The theoretical moon ships that he wrote about in his book, Conquest of the Moon, produces 214 psi in the combustion chamber. But once exposed to the vacuum of space, that pressure is reduced to 0.14 psi. Von Braun clearly stated that an engine plume at 0.14 psi is enough to leave a blast crater in the lunar surface. So much for not being able to find an expert who agrees with me. If the man who built the Saturn V says 0.14 psi is enough to leave a crater, I have every reason to believe that a 1.31 psi plume will do the same. The numbers Astrobrand throws in his video aren't even original. He copied those calculations from Phil Webb's more professionally produced video released just three days earlier. Having shredded Astrobrand's video, there's not much left to discuss in Webb's video. Although, he does make a few other claims that are worth mentioning. 
In his video, Webb claims that, due to the spread angle of flame and its height above the surface, the pressure would be reduced from 1.31 psi to 0.3 psi. He concludes that it's not enough to leave a crater. But again, 0.3 psi is more than the 0.14 psi that Werner von Braun assures us will dig a hole in the lunar surface.